Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. And welcome to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to call in and join the program by dialing 855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. MichaelSavage.com. Visit the website. All the latest news and headlines. You can also sign up for the Savage newsletter. That's for free. Visit the website. It's michaelsavage.com. Now keep in mind, Countdown to Mecca, Dr. Savage's latest bestseller, still available in stores and online. And also be on the lookout for the new nonfiction book. It's coming out in October by Dr. Michael Savage, Government Zero. Look for that coming out in just a couple of weeks. Well, a lot of news today, a lot of developments in the race for president as far as the Republicans. The latest NBC poll will start in fourth place. Fourth place is Marco Rubio and Carly Fiorina at 8%. In third place, latest NBC News poll, Dr. Ben Carson jumping up to 11%. In second place from Texas, Senator Ted Cruz and the front runner going up even more. Who is the leader in the polls? It is Donald Trump. Well, let's go back. We're going to start. We're going to take all your phone calls. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go back. It was Thursday night. The Fox debate. 25 million people watching. Megyn Kelly gets her chance and jumps in with her question for Donald Trump. One of the things people love about you is you speak your mind and you don't use a politician's filter. However, that is not without its downsides, in particular when it comes to women. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account... Only Rosie O'Donnell. No, it wasn't. Thank you. For the record... It was well beyond Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, I'm sure it was. Your Twitter account has several disparaging comments about women's looks. You once told a contestant on Celebrity Apprentice it would be a pretty picture to see her on her knees. Does that sound to you like the temperament of a man we should elect as president? And how will you answer the charge from Hillary Clinton, who is likely to be the Democratic nominee, that you are part of the war on women? The big problem this country has is being politically correct. I've been, ch- I've been challenged by so many people, and I don't frankly have time for total political correctness. And to be honest with you, this country doesn't have time either. This country is in big trouble. We don't win anymore. We lose to China. We lose to Mexico, both in trade and at the border. We lose to everybody. And frankly, what I say, and oftentimes it's fun, it's kidding, we have a good time. What I say is what I say. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. But you know what? We, we need strength, we need energy, we need quickness, and we need brain in this country to turn it around. That I can tell you right now. Now that was obviously a set question, obviously taken out of context. We'll talk about that. We've learned more about some of the context of exactly how that was phrased. But Donald Trump was not done then. That was the Fox debate Thursday night on Friday night. He goes on CNN, Don Lemon, the man who asked, am I the only one that thinks the plane disappeared into a black hole? Trump went off about Megyn Kelly again and said this. 
Well, I just don't respect her as a journalist. I have no respect for her. I don't think she's very good. I think she's highly overrated. But when I came out there, you know, what am I doing? I'm not getting paid for this. I go out there, and, you know, I didn't know there'd be 24 million people. I figured, but I knew it was going to be a big crowd because I get big crowds. I get ratings. They call me the ratings machine. So I have, uh, you know, she, she gets out and she starts asking me all sorts of ridiculous questions. And, you know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes. Uh, blood coming out of her, wherever. But uh, she was, uh, in my opinion, she was uh, off base. All right. Now, there is talk on this Monday, you know, Trump won't apologize. Who should apologize to who in your mind? one 800 savage Now, you've heard of what they were saying that he was inferencing. I don't think he, he meant it that way. He denies he meant it that way. I want to hear from women of what you think of Megyn Kelly. I want to know, many of you are loyal viewers of Fox News. What did you think of the Fox News debate? Why do they want to get Trump out of the race? Do you think this is all to just try to get Trump out of the race? Who should apologize to who? Should should Trump, Donald Trump apologize to Megyn Kelly? Should Megyn Kelly apologize to Donald Trump? Should Fox apologize to Donald Trump. There's all this talk, and there was all this talk yesterday on the Sunday shows, of it's just a matter of time before he's going to burn out, and he can't get above 20%. He's at, he's going up again. Now he's at 23%. And as more people come out of the race, his, his numbers could go up. But especially women, because that's what it was really about. She took what he was saying out of context. He didn't back down. That whole business with Celebrity Apprentice, he was talking about the fact that the person in question, Brandy Roddick, she should be begging. She was begging to stay. That's why she was down on her knees. But what do you think? one 800 savage I mean, if Fox News wanted to have a highly talked about debate, which they did, wildly successful debate they did, but don't you think that did seem, that was a setup. Now, granted, he's the front runner, but Megyn Kelly set up that whole thing. And, and what about, you know, now all these women are criticizing Trump. What about women out there? I'd like to know, women, if you're listening right now, first-time callers, welcome. If you're a woman, do you support Donald Trump in this or Megyn Kelly? You know, many of the things that she was throwing at him, it was back-and-forth arguments where he had been slammed by different people. And he, he, he offends everyone equally to me, I mean, that I've seen, you know, whether it be men or women. He attacks everyone equally. They attacked him. Rosie O'Donnell did attack him. So what do you think? Let's start on line two with Donna, who's listening on WABC in New York. Donna, you're up first. This is John DePietro, and this is the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. Thanks for the time. I wanted to say that I trust Donald Trump to outwit, out-negotiate the dirty politicians and um, you know the trade deals that he suggests that are so bad for the country, that are making so many families poor and unemployed. As a woman, I feel that he would actually make our country stronger. I am scared, and I know everybody is. They're very scared about the very serious state of affairs of this world, domestically and internationally. And for Megyn Kelly to go after him, to imply that he treats women this way, as if I was ever sensitive to what I thought Donald Trump thought of me. No way. I think he's thinking of what's best for me. And I know so many women who are so proud of Donald Trump. And, and all in all, everybody is sick of the political class, of these lawyers who get to Washington, D.C., and with well-scripted speeches lie to us. And I have to say, even Carly Fiorina, for what I've been told, has bashed Cruz about stopping Obamacare. We can't take the lies anymore. We need the truth. And Donald Trump will speak the truth, whether you like it or not. Thank you. Thank you for the call, Donna. Folks, what about you? one 800 savage You know, I saw on one of the blogs today where someone wrote, you know, this is not a matter of political correctness. This is about ordinary decency and he crossed the line and but but there is this huge outcry of women i'd like to know when you heard if you're a woman and you heard what he said on cnn in talking about her the whole thing of the blood coming out of her eyes and whatever did you take that to mean that 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 he was trying to infer that that's why she was so upset um 
you know, a hormonal reason. I, I didn't take it that way. I, I think at this point they're trying to derail him in any way that seemingly no matter what he says, they're going after him and trying to take him down. Let's go to line one. Chris is listening in Connecticut on WDRC. Chris, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. How you doing? This is just my personal opinion on the whole thing. Um, I, I believe in the end, I believe it's going to be a Cruz or a Walker due to the fact that they're making a big thing about poor Donald Trump being attacked. Well, how about the question that was um, aimed at Scott Walker? The thing is, Donald Trump couldn't handle himself in that setting, in my opinion. And I believe he, 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 he's spunting. He's a spin master. And, and, and personally, I was for Donald Trump, but I'm starting to think that what's going to happen when Hillary or, or, or Bernie Sanders, whoever the... The, the, the Democratic now he's going to be, what's going to happen when they attack him? It, it, it's all, it, because he has to understand what it, Megyn Kelly did to him is going to be minor to what he faces if he wins the nomination and has to go against a, a clip. Right, and what did he do? He hit back, Chris, didn't he? He hit back. You say he's a spin back. So no, he's not a politician. You want to talk about Scott Walker. Scott, thank you for the call, Chris. Scott Walker went down. He went down. He's not even in the front. He was flat. Jeb Bush was flat. You know, the, I, people are tired of what's going on and that nothing is getting done. But the media, you know, yesterday, oh, he should. How about the fact? What do you think of Saturday? The fact he was disinvited from Red State. How do you disinvite him? He's the attraction. Let him talk. If people disagree with what he's saying, then that will be shown. I can't stand this attitude, folks. They're trying to decide, you know, whether or not he even belongs up on the stage. He's leading in the polls. How do you knock out the front runner who's leading in the polls? Let's go to line eight. Pam is listening on WJR in Detroit. Pam, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. I'm just wondering why I'm hoping that Donald Trump will ask Megyn Kelly if she has ever referred to another woman in a negative term, with a negative term. You know, I consider myself to be an average woman, and in my lifetime, I have... I'm not proud of it, but, you know, I've under my breath, I've said, you know, what a B or something right. like that. And if but someone I insulted you, Pam, you things. probably insult them back. Well, you know, just not even so that they can hear it. But, you know, I've never I think most women in this country have referred to other women with negativity from time to time. I'm not saying I do it on a regular basis, but I I just would hope that Donald Trump would ask Megyn Kelly, hey, have you ever referred to a woman in a negative way? Well, he, thank you for the call. I, I don't think he's going to be talking to her. But I'd like to know if women, if you enlist, if you think that he owes her an apology, because that keeps getting hammered in. We're going to play it for you. He was asked that yesterday on Meet the Press. Again, we'll take your phone calls. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is... The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. No, there's nothing to apologize. She asked a very, very, I thought, very unfair question, and so did everybody on social media. And I answered the question very well. Uh, I won every poll on debates, Time Magazine, Grudge, and Newsmax, every poll. And people thought I won the debate easily. And, you know, it's sort of an interesting thing. Uh, they, they did not like the way I was questioned. And I understand that. And I just want to get on. But what I said was totally appropriate. There was nothing wrong. Only a deviant, and I literally mean that, only a deviant would think anything other than that. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Dr. Michael Savage. Now, that was Donald Trump yesterday on NBC's Meet the Press, of which even in the past he's attacked Chuck Dodd, but he does not back down. Does he owe Megyn Kelly an apology? Now, Megyn Kelly has spoken out, and we're going to play that for you coming up, but let's get to these busy phones. 1 855 400 Savage. Let's go to line five. Elena is listening on WABC in New York. Elena, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, thanks for taking my call. You're very welcome. I do think that uh, Megan was totally inappropriate. My jaw dropped. 
the first question, even from Brett Baer, was, you know, upsetting. However, you know, okay, maybe it was fair. But Megyn Kelly meant to disembowel him from the start. Uh, even her snarky remark about when did you actually become a Republican? I mean, the word actually was put in there. That's snarky. Yep. Um, you know, uh, in terms of how they should be treated, do the Dems treat their candidates? You know, how do they treat them? Think of Candy Crowley. And right. She, she treated uh, Barack with kid gloves. Uh, I, and, and people are surprised at this backlash against Megan. I, I was a fan of hers, a big fan. But the, over the past year, you know, she's so taken with herself. She looks at the camera, winks, and, you know, thinks we want to hear every little minutia of her personal life because she's such a big rock star. I mean, she's brilliant. I think she was fabulous over the years. But I think she needs to step back and take a look at how she's presenting herself. You know, is it showbiz? It's totally yeah. showbiz. And I, and was Elena, don't you think she thought she was the star of the show last Thursday night? Well, she's been thinking she's the star of the show for the past year. I mean, two years ago, was she as beautiful as she is? To, absolutely. But she was, she was brilliant. She's quick. Her mind is, is, is you know, it's is a laser. However, this past year, I, I've... I've you know, I've lost interest, and people that I do know, I'm not saying I know a thousand people, but they're right. kind of tired of of how she, you know, she's... Of her whole, of, about. thank you, Elena, of, of her whole thing. Well, you, again, you're going to hear her react on the whole Trump uh, situation in just a moment. Let's go to line one. Chrissy is listening on KSFO in San Francisco. Chrissy, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Chrissy. Hi. Uh, well, this is my opinion. Fox News has lost my viewership. Uh, Megyn Kelly, Chris Wallace ganged up on most of the politicians, but especially Donald Trump, where Trump can build walls, he can build jobs, he can stand up to ISIS, he'll stand up to the media, he'll stand up to the oligarchs. And Megyn Kelly thought she was so cool, I believe he'll stand up to Congress, he'll stand up to Putin, and that's what we need. We don't need politicians who are going to give us lip service, what they're going to do, and then they go back to Congress. And they do their own thing. Well, Chrissy, we're gonna we're gonna play for you more what on Trump's reaction, but also did you hear what Megan Kelly said about Trump? We'll play it for you. Again, one eight five five four hundred John DePietro in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. This is the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro. Thank you for tuning in. You are listening, filling in. For Dr. Michael Savage, inviting you to join the program, you can call us toll-free 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. First-time callers are welcome. Don't forget about our website, michaelsavage.com. All the latest news, headlines, you can sign up for the Savage newsletter for free. You can also listen to Michael talking about Megan Kelly on Fox. So we're going to play it a little bit later in the program, but you could listen to it right now if you go to michaelsavage.com. You can also still get Countdown to Mecca. Dr. Savage's best-selling book is available in stores and online and coming out in October. The new nonfiction book, Government Zero, where Dr. Savage sounds the alarm how progressives Radical Islamists are working towards similar ends to destroy Western civilization. Third world dictatorship ruled by government zero. Absolute government, zero representation. Find out about it at michaelsavage.com. You can also hear when Dr. Savage interviewed Donald Trump. Well, Megyn Kelly is speaking out. Let's hear. This is Megyn Kelly on Fox News talking about Donald Trump. I I don't think that my history as a journalist supports uh, bias on my part toward either party. Mm -hmm. And I think I had questions that the left loved, and I think that I had questions that the right loved as well. And that's fine. I mean, when I'm ticking off both sides, I'm in in my sweet spot. I think, you know, when it comes to, you know, somebody like Donald Trump who complained, that's fine. You know, this is a big night for him. And it was the first time he ever participated in a presidential debate. So I'm sure the nerves were high 
as they were for all the candidates. And, it, you know, he felt attacked. It wasn't an attack. It was a fair question. But I get it. And, and he's in the arena, and so am I. So it, it's okay with me that there's, you know, some consternation. I'm sure he'll get over that, and we'll be fine. And You know what's amazing about that? is actually she's not in the arena. She's supposed to be asking the questions and not overshadowing any of the candidates. I think that's very interesting or less common. He's in the arena, so am I. No, you're not. You're supposed to be there. It's, it's, it's as if she thought of herself as equal billing with him, like it was a show. Now, one of the things that Trump came under fire for is this business of not taking the third-party pledge, that he won't run third-party, taking no third-party pledge. ABC News is reporting that a senior Trump advisor is saying that very soon Trump may make the pledge not to run as an independent candidate for president. So that is definitely coming up and showing up that one of the things that they're criticizing him for is that, you know, what is interesting about Megyn Kelly, because there's a story out today where they're replaying some of her comments in 2010 when she was a guest with Howard Stern, where Megyn Kelly talked about her breasts. She talked about um, having sex with her husband, about certain uh, a body part of her husband. So you're, you're starting to see more stories come out about Megyn Kelly now. Trump yesterday on Meet the Press saying that she is actually the one. Megyn Kelly of Fox should be the one apologizing to Donald Trump. The fact is that uh, I think I don't get treated well by Fox, and that's all right, because look what happens. I don't understand it myself. I mean, I have double-digit leads in every poll. I don't know if you saw Georgia just came out. I'm at 34. And, uh, you know, it's like uh, a lot of good things are happening, so maybe I should just leave it the way it is. The fact is she asked me a very inappropriate question. She asked, she should really be apologizing to me. You want to know the truth. Let's go to line two. David is listening on WMAL in our nation's capital. David, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Savage, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, David. Hello, John. Um, my point is that question about the pledge to the third party. Everybody seems to be focusing in on that one aspect of that question, which, if you play it back, it is a two-part question about allegiance not only to the to not be a third party, but also to pledge that you'll support the eventual nominee. Now, if Donald Trump becomes the eventual nominee, I want to make sure that everybody that was up on that stage is is going to, because they didn't raise their hand, that they will support Donald Trump. Because if not, they should have raised their hands with Trump, because it's a two-part question. And it was definitely set up to, for Trump, because it wasn't even asked of the, the five of right. the state. Right. You know, David, thank you for the call, David. Where David's right, though, but is, is that was a, it was really that was the first set up question for him by Brett Beer. But some of the people, d- does it really matter? Some of the candidates that are just going to fall off, never mind the first debate. I mean, Pataki shouldn't even be there. Lindsey Graham shouldn't even be there. You're seeing Huckabee fall by the wayside. Jeb Bush, boy, barely showed up. Um, I, I don't know if it even matters if some of them, whether or not they would, in fact, support him. Let's go to line eight. Christine is listening on WJR in Detroit. Christine, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. Um, I love Donald Trump. I would. He. He. I trust him with my life. I am sick and tired of females need to be treated like a, you know, a precious little thing instead of. Uh, strong individuals that we are, which we've always been. We stand up. He's teaching us to stand up. He's a fabulous human being. Um, And I made up the slogan, conservative strong all day long, and that's Donald Trump. But what do you think of Megyn Kelly? Oh, she's toast. What do you mean? Toast. Well, what I mean is she was totally out of line. There was nothing professional about her and her role there. Her role was to ask questions Hard questions, whatever. But what she did was she just took her opportunity to put him on the spot. He handled it great. I, who cares if people do that to him? Because he really, as his daughter said, my father, 
Is your best friend or your worst enemy? Well, you know, it's fun. thank you for the call, Christine. You know what? It is interesting. Is you, we, you didn't know the context of that, and he was granted he's the front runner, but he was the only one that got a specific question like that, and you don't know also don't know what the exchange was back and forth with with some of those comments. Don't, don't you agree? Let's go to line six. Farissa is listening on WABC in New York. Farissa, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Farissa. Hi, John. I'm with all the clear-thinking women, the large majority, who support Donald Trump and who have big problems with Megyn Kelly, but don't give her credit for coming up with these questions that are on her own. Now, if Donald Trump drops out of all future debates, he will win the nomination by the largest majority in the history of the Republican Party. He'll talk to the people directly. He will avoid these kind of ambushes. These things are not menage a trois. These are menageries. We have 10 people in a debate. They're yes. after Trump. He knows it. He should drop out. Don't you agree that he could drop out now, get the attention of a nation? No. I'll tell you why for a set. Thank you for the call. But no, listen, you, you want to see how they're going to perform up there. And by standing alongside, whether it be George Bush, uh, Jeb Bush, excuse me, or the governor of Jersey, Chris Christie, who's totally flat, or Huckabee, who is flat, or Scott Walker, who is really flat. No, it's a chance for him to showcase himself against those candidates. So, no, I, I don't think he should drop out just because of the flare-up with Megyn Kelly. As a matter of fact, I think it would look very weak if he did. I I, I think he had a, maybe a right to feel that he got kind of ambushed, but you got to move on. You can't just settle a score with everyone. But do you think that Fox set up Trump? Do you think Megyn Kelly, I mean, just her own words, he's in the arena, I'm in the arena, she definitely regarded herself as she was ready to go toe-to-toe with him as a fear. Do you think that's being an objective moderator? It, it, it doesn't seem that way. Let's go to line four. Lori is listening on KCMO. Lori, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, thank you. I'm a first-time caller. and I Oh, great. On this. Uh, this has really disturbed me for what Kelly has done to Donald Trump. I love him. He's awesome. He's a businessman. Not only that, my children, we were all watching as a family, and it was disgusting, the questions that she was asking that had nothing to do with the future of our country. And you know what? She she just set herself up because, you know what? She, Donald Trump can buy Fox and say, you're fired, Kelly. That's just <laughs> now, why do you love him, though, Lori? You said, I love. why do you love him? Why does your family love him? Because when we hear him talk... I'm in business myself, I and mean, when you yep. just see the fruit of his labor and what he can do, that's the bottom line. You feel safe, like we have a future and a hope, like, you know, jobs for our children. Um, I like him because he's strong. He says what he means. He doesn't care. He's spending his own money. He yes. Yes. And, Lori, you know what else is, Lori? I can't stand these people that say, well, he's not very presidential. Uh, he's not very presidential. Lori, right now we have a leader who is afraid of some of the dictators in the world. Does Trump seem to you like he would be afraid of any of them? Absolutely not. He's dealt with most of them, and they're afraid of him because he knows the inside track on how to stop them. Yes. Thank thank you for the call, Lori. I I agree, but don't you hear that? Aren't you tired of that? Well, I'm just not sure he's presidential. Well, then, who who was presidential in the first debate? uh, Pataki? Or who was presidential? Jeb Bush? You know, someone mentioned to me yesterday, Jeb Bush, like he, he looked like he was at brunch and trying to order off the menu. I mean, talk about flat. I recognize he has a lot of money. I saw uh, ye- yesterday, I know on one of the the shows that, you know, they're still saying, well, you know, Jeb Bush still has a lot of uh, 130 million. I, I just don't see it. I, I thought he was very, very flat. Let's go to line nine. Lynn is listening to the Savage Nation on great radio station WBAP in Dallas. Lynn, this is John DePietro. Welcome, and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Lynn. Thank you. Yes, I would like to comment on your question regarding Megyn Kelly. Yes. The way she handled the debate. I believe that um, Megyn Kelly, her, she, she, her, the whole thing was about herself. And the way she conducted that debate, um, 
she was her I believe her goal was to make a name for herself yep. at Mr. Trump's expense. I don't know whether she was looking to try to become an anchor on one of the uh, main broadcasting uh, uh, channels or not, but she had an agenda, and her agenda was to make a name for herself at Mr. Trump's expense. I believe that the debate degenerated uh, to the point where on Thursday, uh, uh, I believe it was Friday, on CNN, and I watched uh, that interview with Mr. Trump. On yeah, with Don Lemon. Yes. And yeah. I was just glad Lemon didn't have a gas mask on during this interview. <laughs> Never for Oh, wait a minute. He only does that when he's out in the streets of Ferguson. <laughs> Never for one moment did I think anything that Mr. Trump said referred to uh, Megan, uh, period, Me- Megan and her menstrual period, if they right. say. Yeah, I didn't take it that way. Did you, Lynn? My mind didn't go there. And I think the people who, whose minds did go there and who are criticizing Mr. Trump for something he did not say and something he did not intend to say, right. these people have an agenda. Yes. Their agenda is anti-Trump, yep. uh, to take down Mr. Trump out of the uh, Republican primary, to deny him the primary uh, winner. And, when, and what... What the Republican Party does not understand is that we, the people, have chosen Donald Trump. Yes. You know, I'm going to hold you right there, Lynn, but you bring up a very good point. I can't believe when I watch uh, some of the comments saying, you know, maybe they should not let him on the debates and maybe they should, you know, enough is enough. And Jeb Bush was trying to say that. You know, how do you throw out the person that's leading in the polls? You know, he's obviously tapped into the people. People think that the people in Washington in both parties are useless. Irene is listening on WJR on Line 2. Irene, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Irene. Hi, yes. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I'm a conservative woman, and I'm not necessarily a Donald Trump for president supporter, um, although I do appreciate his frankness on a lot of the issues. But no, he does not owe Megyn Kelly an apology for his comment. I did not take it. The way that um, it was spun, uh, I thought she sounded antagonistic uh, the other night during the debate. Um, almost seemed like she was putting on a bit of a show. Yes. Um, you know, that was... Irene, didn't it strike you that way? Thank you for the call, Irene. Definitely, and again, we'll replay her comments. She, make no mistake about it, she was there to be the star of the show. That's why they picked her. That's why she was sitting in the center. It wasn't O'Reilly. It wasn't Shep Smith. It was her. And she got the first question, and she went right after him. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. More of your phone calls coming up. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. This is the Savage Nation. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Matthew on line five is listening on WABC in New York. Matthew, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. How are you? Great. Very well, Matthew. Thank you for calling. Well, I just want to say the first time that they said, to, is there anybody there that might think of running, uh, you know, on a third-party ticket, they knew he'd be thinking about that. They could have just asked him the question directly, and he would answer them. They wanted to shine the light on him right from the beginning. No substance to any of the questions. This man is, will pick our country up economically. They never asked him anything that was of any substance. And when he answered, they looked to knock him down. I watched the first debate, the early debates. That was really questions that were asked that the people that were up there could answer. Sure. What about his social life or what you did there or what you did here. <laughs> you know, so you know Matt, Matthew, you're right. It was definitely a, a, set, a set question. No, no question about it. Renee is uh, listening on KSFO on line one. Renee, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Renee. Hi. You know, I think that the question was extremely valid, and I even think that it was a good question. It was clearly for the left. And he really, as a businessman, he should know about missed opportunity. That was, he should have expected that. It was a complete missed opportunity to say to everyone, you know what, I'm so much of an equal opportunist. It doesn't matter if you're a man or... If- or a woman. You're exact. Thank you, Renee, that, that I offend both. I agree. Again, 
John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. And you're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro filling in for the one and only Dr. Michael Savage. You can join the program. First time call is welcome. Dial us up 1 855 400 Savage. 1 855 400 7282. Visit the website michaelsavage.com for all your latest news and headlines. Sign up for the Savage newsletter for free, all at michaelsavage.com. Countdown to Mecca. Great for late summer reading. You're going on vacation? Well, no better book to pick up to read for that vacation than Countdown to Mecca. It is still available. That's right, on the website and also in stores and online. And get ready because coming in October, the new book from Dr. Michael Savage, Government Zero, coming out, new nonfiction, coming out in October. Well, No matter what, no matter how he is attacked, no matter how different Republicans even try to throw him out, no matter how much the media goes after him, latest NBC poll, Donald Trump goes up again and remains the front runner by over 10 points. And how about that Eric Erickson who disinvited Trump Saturday from Red State? If Eric Erickson is listening, call into the program. 855-400-7282. I made the right decision. Do you think he made the right decision? By he decided that Trump should not be allowed to speak at the conservative gathering on Saturday. He decided. So he decides it. Well, huge numbers watched the debate Thursday night on Fox News. Megyn Kelly still waiting for an apology. I'd like to hear more women saying, that Trump does in your in your mind does Donald Trump owe Megan Ke- Kelly an apology? Let's hear it. It was Friday night. Trump went on CNN with Don Lemon and said the following. Well, I just don't respect her as a journalist. I have no respect for her. I don't think she's very good. I think she's highly overrated. But when I came out there, you know, what am I doing? I'm not getting paid for this. I go out there, and, you know, I didn't know there'd be 24 million people. I figured, but I knew it was going to be a big crowd because I get big crowds. I get ratings. They call me the ratings machine. So I have, uh, you know, she she gets out, and she starts asking me all sorts of ridiculous questions. And, you know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes. Uh, blood coming out of her wherever, but uh, she was, uh, in my opinion, she was uh, off base. That is the line where people are screaming for Trump to now apologize. What do you think? One eight five five four hundred Savage. Why should he leave the race? Shouldn't it be up to the voters to decide whether or not if he leaves the race? I, I mean, aren't you tired of... Did you see any real stars on that stage? There were some people that had good nights. Marco Rubio had a good night. There were definitely some people that had a good night. But with, without question, don't you find he's the one that speaks out the most? Isn't he the one that's gotten the most attention? Now, I want you to hear. This is Megyn Kelly. Friday on Fox. We're going to play clip nine. This is Megyn Kelly, and at the very end of this clip, listen to how she describes herself as if she was one of the stars in the arena Thursday night. I, 
I don't think that my history as a journalist supports uh, bias on my part toward either party. Mm -hmm. And I think I had questions that the left loved, and I think that I had questions that the right loved as well. And that's fine. I mean, I, when I'm ticking off both sides, I'm in, I'm in my sweet spot. I think, you know, it, when it comes to you know somebody like Donald Trump who complained, that's fine. You know, this was a big night for him, and it was the first time he ever participated in a presidential debate. So I'm sure the nerves were high as they were for all the candidates and it you know he felt attacked it wasn't an attack it was a fair question but I get it and, and he's in the arena and so am I so it, it's okay with me that there's you know some consternation I'm sure he'll get over that and we'll be fine and she's not in the arena much like the way at a baseball game she you know she mentioned sweet spot an umpire is not on the field with the with the players the umpire at a baseball game referee in an NFL game they, they shouldn't be part of being a star of the game, right? They should just blend in. Now, when she talks about sweet spot, a baseball fan would know that's when a hitter describes right, the pitch goes right where they want to hit it. If they like to hit a low fastball, then that's the pitcher through a low fastball. If they want to hit a high high fastball or high changeup, that's where it's going to be. But that's the sweet spot. So she basically was saying that she was looking to really hit a home run here as opposed to being a moderator, Right who just lets the candidates and the issues dictate. But all this talk that Trump has to apologize and Trump should get out of the race. And, you know, how about this talk? Oh, women now will never vote for Trump. We, oh, he's going to lose. Yesterday and meet the press. Well, he's lost and, 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 uh, this week with Stephanopoulos. Well, he's lost the women vote now. Women will never vote for him over Megyn Kelly. Megyn Kelly, she's the I, I disagree with that. And I'd like to hear from some of the women out there. If you agree with that. Oh, that's it. Forget it. He's lost. He's lost 53% of the vote because women are never they're never going to vote for Trump now. I I don't I don't I don't agree with that. Let's go to Diana, who's listening on KSFO on line three. Diana, this is John DePietro sitting in for Doctor Savage, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Diana. Hello, sir. Thanks for taking my call. No game over. Megan loses. Here's why. She responded. Journalist are not supposed to respond because they're not supposed to make the issues about themselves. They don't like doing that. She just did. He can move on now, whatever he's going to do. If the party splinters, I'm moving with him. They just play the oldest game in the book, sex and politics. They've been after him for weeks to answer that first question, and they wanted a yes from him. He says, if they're fair to me, then we're, we're good to go. Right. They counted him for weeks before that. So what they do? They made it part of the debate. Those three look like people that were in a cocktail lounge at a party they didn't conduct themselves professionally at all you know what i thought when my jaw dropped after she finished her first question was this: that 1938 betty davis movie where aunt bell says i'm thinking of a woman she's called jezebel and she done evil in the sight of god and i'm not a religious person but that fits that woman perfectly so bye-bye, Megan, and quit digging your high heels in because you lost. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the call, Diana. Kurt is on line four. He's listening on WBAP in Dallas. Kurt, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. Hello, John. Thank you. Hey, that last lady, I think she, uh, the polls will show it if you start looking in the polls today. Uh, you know what? When, when you played that clip where she said she's going to, you know, just find the sweet spot where she ticks off the left and the right, well... If you look at a sentence prior to that, or two sentences prior, she says the reason she asked all the guys all the big, hard, tough questions is because she doesn't want Hillary Clinton to necessarily be elected. Well, that's partisan. And then she says she's nonpartisan. Well, I don't think she knows what she wants to be when she grows up, and that's the honest-to-God truth. <laughs> Thank you for the call, Kurt. Uh, Kurt. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. If you're a Fox viewer... Has this affected how you view Fox? And what do women think of Megyn Kelly? If you're a woman and maybe you watch Fox, are you now coming to her defense? Do you think she did this to try to overshadow the whole debate? I think Roger Ailes was actually the big winner here. He knew exactly what he was doing. It was his show. It was wildly successful. I mean, the good news is it blew away anything on MSNBC. It blew away. No one even watched Jon Stewart. With his final night, he got no ratings at all. But he didn't have Bill O'Reilly out there. He didn't have Shep Smith out there or anyone else from Fox. No, Megyn Kelly 
was the anointed star of the night, seated right in the middle, and then boom, they fed her, don't you think, to go right after Trump. Sally on line six is listening on WJR in Detroit. Sally, this is John DePietro, and you're up in the Savage Nation. Hello. I'll tell you what, John. I was going to watch that red state convention until Erickson made the decision for me that Trump should not be on there. Yep. Then I no longer wanted to watch it. Agreed. He doesn't need to make my decision. I'm a big girl. Right. We're all adults, right, Sally? If, if the, the people will decide if someone says something where they shouldn't be part of the discussion. That's right. You know, if he doesn't want to vote for him, he doesn't have to. And I'm not Sally, I'm voting for him. But- Sally, do you notice there's, there's this whole group of people that feel we should pick who should be up there? We should pick. He shouldn't even be part of the discussion. He doesn't get invited. Who are these people that make the rules where the adults can't decide who they want to vote for and who they want to hear from? Right. And as far as Trump and Megyn Kelly, that was a clash of egos. You know, Megyn should have left her ego at her desk before she sat down in that chair. She had no business attacking Trump. That whole debate, what I thought when I looked at it, was rigged from the start. Not only, not only to attack Trump, but to the questions, because I wrote a little dot down for every question they asked everybody. And right. if it weren't for the ones where they asked every, everybody got to apply. Trump, Trump did well, he got enough, but Ted Cruz and Rand Paul would have gotten three questions that whole Yes. Time. Now, Sally, what do you want to say to Megyn Kelly? Because, I mean, with this show right now, we are on in New York, and she's in New York, and from what I understand, someone tweeted at me, she is, in fact, listening. Talk directly to her. What do you want to say to Megyn Kelly? I think she was totally out of place, totally Tell out Tell her place. that. Talk directly to her. Megyn? You had no business to make this personal, and that's what I feel Fox News and you did. Thank you for the call, Sally. Rick is listening on WMAL in Washington on Line 9. Rick, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. Uh, I think Megyn Kelly's in bed with Anderson Cooper. Well, you know, you mean trying to take someone down? I think it's entirely different, and maybe that, that maybe they had their... The guard down because it was Fox. Although, you know, Trump is now tweeting out that Roger Ailes called him directly and promises him he will be treated fairly on Fox going forward. Gene on line seven is listening on KSFO in San Francisco. Gene, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Thank you. Uh, these questions were uh, Megan. Uh, bragged for weeks and weeks and weeks how hard they were working on the questions. I believe those questions came from the Maury Povich show. It was absolutely ridiculous. You cannot even call it a debate. That, if they need to go back to school, she's a lawyer. She ought to know what a debate is. This was not a debate. Her supporters say she's a woman, you're a woman, and therefore you're going to defend her and jump off the Trump bandwagon. No, you misunderstand me. She used questions from the Maury Povich show. No, I know. You said that the first time, but no one even really watches that show anymore. Thank you for the call, Gene. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Now, coming up, you're going to want to hear this. Dr. Savage spoke out about Megyn Kelly, about Fox, going after Trump. We're going to play that for you, plus more of your phone calls. 1-855-400-7282. It's John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Well, look, I have nothing against Megyn Kelly. I think her question was extremely unfair to me. Her whole questioning was unfair to me. And when you say beloved, I will say this, on social media, I'm the one that's beloved, okay? Because if you look at social media and what's happening, they are really coming out strongly in favor of Donald Trump. They agree. And this whole thing with his political correctness in this country is out of control. That was Donald Trump on CNN. This is John DePietro. You're listening to the Savage Nation, sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Don't forget about our website, michaelsavage.com, for all the latest news and headlines. The debate continues to flare up. And keep in mind, 
Our great station in New York that carries the Savage Nation, WABC. Donald Trump is in New York. He listens to WABC. Megyn Kelly is in New York and listens to WABC. So when you call in, you can talk directly to either one. Rebecca on line four is listening to us on WMAL in Washington. Rebecca, you're on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. First time caller. Obviously oh, great. Welcome. Me. <laughs> Riled up enough to call in. <laughs> The uh, This is another conservative woman who, sorry, but Megan, you don't speak for me, and you don't speak for a lot of us women. She needs to get off her high horse and put herself in check, period. I mean, it's, listen, Donald Trump isn't perfect, and, and those of us who support him, no, he's not perfect. But the reason we are so staunchly supporting him, and it's not just conservatives, there are Democrats, there are independents who are supporting him, because right. the fact is he speaks from the heart. He's yep. not rehearsed. It's not BS that's been cleansed through the political machine. And we trust that. Is he, you know, it, like I said, it's not perfect. No. But he's got, uh, you know, he's got my trust. But Rebecca, she was there to be the star of the night. Don't you agree? Absolutely. He's the reason they had 24 million viewers. Yes. But she, thank you for the call, Rebecca, but she definitely, Megan Kelly was there. And, and uh, look, I mean, she definitely had a breakout night. Now, Kay on line five is listening on WMAC in Georgia. Kay, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Kay. Hello. I just wanted to say that Donald Trump is the only statesman standing on the stage. He's the only person that's leaving his family and using his own money and trying to go to Washington, D.C. To, to serve his country. And Megyn Kelly certainly doesn't speak for me, and neither does Eric Erickson. I'm well, that's the thing, Kay. Why did Eric Erickson and why did your the people in Georgia uninvite Trump for Saturday? That was wrong, Kay. Well, I don't really know why, but I will just say that maybe he has aspirations and he thought he was hitching his wagon to the right course. <laughs> I really don't know. Well, I'm glad to hear you come out and say that uh, that, uh, that an apology in order, because people want to hear him. Line 7 is Ron listening on WABC in New York. Ron, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Ron. Hi, John. How you doing? Uh, Very well. I'd just like to say the whole thing was really to take Trump out of the whole running, and uh, he could have really turned the table on Megan as when that question was pointed at him. Could have just said, you know, with all due respect, Megan, you know, it's it's actually media people like you that have made america the way it is now thank you for the call ron now coming up you're going to want to hear this dr savage in his own words breaks down megan kelly trump and fox news it's all ahead it's john DePietro sitting in on the savage nation Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Visit our website, michaelsavage.com, all the latest news, headlines. Sign up for the Savage Newsletter for free. That's right, right at michaelsavage.com. Countdown to Mecca, Dr. Savage's latest bestseller. What a great late summer read. You're going to go on vacation? Before you head out, make sure you pick up countdown to mecca and stay tuned although it is still available in stores and online coming out in october the new nonfiction book from dr michael savage it's coming out government zero now we're going to get back to your phone calls at 1-855-400-SAVAGE but here is in his own words his opinions on the debate on donald trump on hillary clinton and Megyn Kelly is the one and only Dr. Michael Savage. One of the things people love about you is you speak your mind and you don't use a politician's filter. However, that is not without its downsides, in particular when it comes to women. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account... Only Rosie several- O'Donnell. CNN plus Fox plus MSNBC equals CIA plus NSA. Welcome to the Savage Nation. It's clear now that Mayhem Kelly is working for the other side. It's clear now that Martha Washington and Roger Ailes and Rupert Murdoch are working for Hillary Clinton. It's as clear as a bell that Mayhem Kelly 
has gone over to the dark side. And frankly, her looks are changing. It's the portrait of Dorian Kelly. The more she sells out, the wider her nostrils have become. Listen to what I just said to you. Have you seen them flare? This woman was once pretty. And the more she has sold out, the wider her nostrils have become. They're almost porcine. She snorts her insults at America. And as I say, it's now the portrait of Dorian Kelly, not the portrait of Dorian Gray. The portrait of Dorian Gray, or the picture of Dorian Gray, which I referred to, was published in the July 1890 issue of Lippincott's Monthly Magazine. And I was using it as a reference to Megyn Kelly because the story is very telling. It's set in Victorian England, and it's a very handsome young man who was given a portrait of himself by an admiring artist. And soon after this, he treats a young woman cruelly and then notices that the painting starts to change in form. And he is no longer the good-looking man in the painting. He's quite ugly. Now, the analogy is quite useful here because although Megyn Kelly's looks may not have changed to herself in her Cinderella mirror backstage, the cameras that we all watch is the portrait that I'm referring to. And the portrait of Dorian Kelly is quite revealing. You watch her face change. You will see it change over the coming months. Now that she is drunk on her own power, you will see what I see because I see things before anyone else. And I've told you what I've seen. The more she has sold out, the wider her nostrils have become. Almost poor sign as she snorts her insults at America. The issue is not Trump, it's Mayhem Kelly. The issue is not Trump, it's Meatball Jr. The issue is not Trump, it's Brett Baer, who's destroyed himself as a journalist. And the issue now is, why is it that MSNBC and CNN are gloating over how well Fox did last night in the debate? Why is it that radical libs like Frank Brunei of the New York Times love the debate? Why is it that every anti-American, progressive, lout in the United States of America loved what Fox News did to the Republicans last night? When you play it unfair and you're... You use demagoguery, as Mayhem Kelly did, you get big ratings. She has now exceeded Jenner. She's drawing bigger than Caitlyn did. That's the main thing. I mean, she outdrew Caitlyn, the reality show. The reality show of Megyn Kelly outdrew Caitlyn. I am Caitlyn. As now I am Megyn. I am, I, from I am Caitlyn to I am Mayhem. A whopping 24 million people watched the variety show, the reality show called I am Mayhem, uh, last night, 9 p.m. Eastern, to just past 11 p.m. Eastern time. Mayhem drew seven point, I am Mayhem drew 7.9 million in the A25 to 54 demo. This is the highest non-sports cable program of all time, the highest rated cable news program of all time, and Fox News' most watched program ever. So it proves again that if you go lower than I am Caitlin, you get a bigger audience. And so now we have I am uh, Mayhem, which is outdrawing I am Caitlin. The 5 p.m. Eastern uh, time debate with the seven lower tier candidates, did very well for Fox News as well. It drew 6.1 million total viewers and 1.2 million in the demo, making it the third highest primary debate ever on cable. So again, you've got to see that going to the gutter and attacking candidates who could save America makes money. And that's exactly why Facebook makes so much money. That's exactly why Facebook was the co-sponsor of uh, the new reality show, I Am Mayhem. And incidentally, you know, Marshall McLuhan, who was the genius on the media, wrote a book or an essay many years ago called The Medium is the Message. And we all learned from that. The minute the cameras opened up on the stage, I knew it was a setup. Before one word was uttered from um, Mayhem Kelly, I knew it was a setup. Why did I say that? Because who was stage left most prominently displayed for the world to see amongst all the Republican candidates? It was the overweight Chris Christie. His waistline was exemplified. So they set the whole thing up. But how much further do you have to go than the fact that there was a big F on the stage, on the screen, throughout the whole thing? It was Mark Zuckerberg. Miss Don, the shirt was behind the whole thing. When have you ever heard of a man in favor of cheapening American wages and flooding America with illegal aliens, buying a network during the opposition's debates? When have you ever heard of this? Well, you just heard of it. What do you think the F stood for? Mark Zuckerberg joined forces with Fox News to undermine one Donald Trump and be the entire Republican ticket. And that was for one reason only, because Zuckerberg is the greediest man in the history of the world. Zuckerberg wants cheap labor. Zuckerberg doesn't care who gets hurt. Zuckerberg just wants them in this country.
And so that's why Trump is the biggest threat to the status quo. The establishment is afraid of Donald Trump. Now, if you look back at uh, May Mayhem Kelly's history, she was on target with so many statements. She was talking about Obama planning to force communities that are too white and too privileged to embrace diversity. That was as near as June 11, 2015. She was right on, on uh, target. On the May 20th edition of Fox News, Kelly criticized Michelle Obama's commencement speech because she listened to the Savage Nation and she learned that it pandered to the culture of victimization. Okay. On the July 7th edition of Fox News's The Kelly File, Mayhem Kelly listened to the Savage Nation and she attacked Jeb Bush on the Mexican immigrant issue. When she said Jeb Bush is married to a Mexican immigrant, so how do you say he is hostile toward immigrants? On the May 26, 2009 edition of The Savage Nation, Kelly listened to the show and uh, she attacked Sotomayor. On the July 13, 2009 edition uh, of The Savage Nation, she learned from me uh, how to deal with this issue of Sotomayor. And so all of a sudden she goes from the darling of the conservatives in America, and I call her affectionately Martha Washington, to Matahari, because she's become the exact opposite. And everybody knows that you're listening to the show to vent. Many of you are very, very upset seeing what Fox News tried to do but failed, by the way, to achieve, not only against Trump, but the entire Republican ticket. Never forget what they did. They tried to destroy the Republican Party by reverting to stereotypical questions about women, rape, this and that, sexism, abortion, God, you heard what she was doing, all of them. They're no different. Okay, we know that. But I don't think they succeeded. The subtext of this will be lost on you unless you recognize what the F on the screen represented. Throughout the debate, you saw a large F to the right of your screen, did you not? I did. I watched it for an hour and a half. What is the F for? Facebook. And who was in the audience cheering and booing? Facebook workers, no doubt, from the Facebook factory. Who is Facebook? Who owns Facebook? What are their politics? Zuckerberg owns Facebook. Why was he chosen as a sponsor when he has such a bias uh, against strong immigration policies? Doesn't that tell you everything you need to know? Why would they partner with a guy like Zuckerberg who marched arm in arm with illegal aliens a few months ago demanding that we have open borders? And why would a billionaire like him want open borders? Well, because he wants cheaper workers. Certainly the women and children coming in from Honduras and El Salvador are not going to work for Facebook. I get that. But all of the Indian workers that he has on his payroll who have replaced American workers at about half the price are certainly part of the quotient in Mark Zuckerberg's desire for open borders. And if you check out Facebook and you look at his board of directors and you look at his legal team, you will see a large number of folks from India on his legal team. Nothing wrong with that. I've always supported people from India. Yeah, people from India know that. They know that going back 10 years. But I don't support illegal immigration from anywhere, especially when uh, the illegal immigrants are willing to work for half the price of American IT workers, just to stuff the pockets of a multi-billionaire. And that's why, unless you recognize that the F on the screen last night told you everything you needed to know and then some uh, about the so-called debates, I think you're going to miss the bigger picture. The bigger picture is it was a setup between Facebook and Fox News. And I give them both an F on the so-called debate. Brilliance by Dr. Michael Savage. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You are listening to the Savage Nation. Nicole is on line nine listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Nicole, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. Listen, I think, honestly, it would be a godsend for him to exit the race. I don't think he's going to make the Republican ticket. I think, do I think Megyn Kelly did that on purpose? Absolutely. I almost feel like she's in on it with him. I feel like he's going to take the third party route, steal the votes, and ensure that Hillary Clinton becomes our next president. That's what I think this guy is here to do. Doesn't share conservative values like the rest of us. I don't think he should be president, but I know where this is going. And I think it's a setup, honestly. Nicole, there's a, uh, she's talking about Donald Trump. Thank you for the call. There's a, a new poll out, a new poll that just came out that has Trump at 32%. Why would the front runner 
would you leave the race if you were 32 percent? And not only that, but around the country, people are rallying to Trump's defense. Women are rallying to Trump's defense. There's a new uh, petition out, 25,000 signatures that says Megyn Kelly should not be part of any further debates. Denise on line one is listening on WJR. Denise, this is John DePietro, and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. Hi. Um, I was calling to say that I agree with, you know, almost every viewer that's called in. I think Trump was set up. And um, if their questions were so legit, why have Megyn Kelly, Chris Wallace, and Brett Baer been making the rounds on all the different Fox shows for the past four days trying to defend their questions and themselves? Yep. And uh, Brett Bear was on Media Buzz, and he said that the reason that he asked that first question was because uh, there had been talk for weeks about Trump refusing to say that he would not go third party. Then Brett Bear said that he didn't know who would raise their hand at that first question. But then he said that if Trump didn't raise his hand, that he was prepared to go after him for not raising his hand when because there had been all this talk and stuff. So that just goes to show that it was a set up question aimed specifically at Trump. Right. And thank you. Thank you for the thank you for the call, Denise. You know, it, it is interesting, but Megan Kelly, and we'll play the clip again, she's the one, let's face it, she's the one that went there to be a star and this thing has exploded. But there's a lot of people upset. Are you upset with Fox? If you're a Fox viewer, do you feel that she stepped in and tried to be the almost the eleventh candidate on the stage? Angie on line two is listening to the Savage Nation on WBAP. Angie, hello. Hi, I just wanted to say that Megyn Kelly looked like she was in court cross-examining a witness. It was pathetic. It's a typical problem of a woman wanting to be in a man's political world. And I just wanted to say if the woman can't handle the heat, she needs to get out of the kitchen. (laughs) Thank you for the call, Angie. Marie on line four is listening on KBET. Marie, hello, you're on the Savage Nation. Hi, John. No, I don't don't feel that Megyn Kelly uh, should deserve an apology from Trump. Why? Because she started it all in the first place by asking him a disrespectful question to begin with. I'm sick of this uh, pampering the women of America. We're a lot stronger than most people think we are. Hillary probably started this thing about the women crap in the first place so her husband disrespected her and we're paying for it thank you for the call marie we'll come back more of your phone calls ahead 1-855-400-SAVAGE visit our website it's michaelsavage.com this is john DePietro sitting in for dr michael savage you're listening to the savage nation join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage your savage nation is sponsored by swissamerica.com it's the only company i trust for tangible assets gold and silver call 800 b-u-i-c-o-i-n well the fact is that uh, i think i don't get treated well by fox and that's all right because look what happens i don't understand it myself i mean i have double digit leads in every poll I don't know if you saw Georgia just came out. I'm at 34. And, uh, you know, it's like uh, a lot of good things are happening, so maybe I should just leave it the way it is. The fact is she asked me a very inappropriate question. She asked, she should really be apologizing to me. You want to know the truth. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. What you just heard, that was Donald Trump on MSNBC talking about Megyn Kelly. You can read more at our website at michaelsavage.com all the latest news and headlines out to your calls robbie on line six is listing on wmal in our nation's capital robbie you're up on the savage nation hello hi thanks john i just want to make a point that everybody's missing and it goes back about 24 months ago barack obama labeled fox as not being a legitimate news agency since then all the democrats when they're opposed they say you're not a legitimate news agency so all they did the fact that Megyn Kelly is a pawn for the Dems, all she did on Trump's shoulders with that great audience is she created an opportunity for them to become a mainstream uh, media outlet. She took aim at him, and had no one's thinking about what they were doing. It was a brilliant move. They've somehow now mirrored MSNBC, 
CNN and the mainstream media because they're in fear. They're running paranoid. So this well, is their way. There's no question, Robbie, Megyn Kelly is now the face of Fox News, even over Bill O'Reilly. Our website's michaelsavage.com. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. It's John DePietro filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. I invite you to call into the program at 1 855 400 Savage. 1 855 400 7282. As always, first time callers are welcome. Make sure you visit our website, michaelsavage.com. All the latest news, headlines. You can sign up for the Savage newsletter for free. And don't forget about Countdown to Mecca, Dr. Savage's latest bestseller, great for late summer reading, Countdown to Mecca, which is still available in stores and online. And be on the lookout for the new nonfiction book that's due out in October from Dr. Michael Savage, Government Zero, where Dr. Savage cuts through mainstream media propaganda to reveal an all-out attack on our borders. Government Zero coming in October. Well, new polls out. NBC News. Who's in the lead? Yes. Donald Trump. 23%. He went up. He didn't go down after that Fox News debate. He went up. Who also went up? Ted Cruz. He's at 13%. The front runner Trump is 10 points up. There's another poll that has Trump at 32%. Who's in third? Dr. Ben Carson, 11%. And then Marco Rubio and Carly Fiorina, both at 8%. Now, there's still a lot of talk, and we're going to get to some of the sound, more of your phone calls, some of the sound from Thursday night's Fox News debate that everyone is still talking about. Who also has been in the news? President Obama, although on vacation, the president has now doubled down on Republican opposition, now saying they have a lot in common with the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. What I said is absolutely true factually. The truth of the matter is inside of Iran, the people most opposed to the deal are the Revolutionary Guard, the Quds Force, hardliners who are implacably opposed to any cooperation uh, with the international community. The reason that Mitch McConnell and the rest of uh, the folks in his caucus who opposed this uh, jumped out and opposed it before they even read it, before it was even posted, uh, uh, is reflective of a ideological commitment not to get a deal done. You don't and in that you're... sense, uh, they do have uh, a lot in common with hardliners uh, who are much more satisfied with the status quo. Terrible. Last night, of course, there was supposed to be a peaceful protest, anniversary, shooting in Ferguson. Instead, someone went to fire at a police officer and they got shot. Now, many people support Donald Trump, and there's still a lot of talk of who should apologize to who. You know, should Fox News apologize to Trump? Should Trump apologize to Megyn Kelly? Should Megyn Kelly apologize to Donald Trump? Many of the Trump supporters, you're going to be asked this question. Would you still support him if he went third party? Let's hear clip four. Go back to the debate. Here was the question. It was staged on whether or not. Trump would support 
whoever wins the Republican primary. Is there anyone on stage, and can I see hands, who is unwilling tonight to pledge your support to the eventual nominee of the Republican Party and pledge to not run an independent campaign against that person. Again, we're looking for you to raise your hand now. Raise your hand now if you won't make that pledge tonight. Mr. Trump. So, Mr. Trump, to be clear, you're standing on a Republican primary debate. I fully understand. The place where the RNC will give the nominee the nod. I fully understand. And that experts say an independent run would almost certainly hand the race over to Democrats and likely another Clinton. You can't say tonight that you can make that pledge. I cannot say I have to respect the person that if it's not me, the person that wins. If I do win and I'm leading by quite a bit, uh, that's what I want to do. I can totally make that pledge. If I'm the nominee, I will pledge I will <laughs> not run as an independent. But uh, And I am discussing it with everybody, but I'm you know, talking about a lot of leverage. We want to win, and we will win. But I want to win as the Republican. I want to run as the Republican nominee. So tonight you can't say if another one of these... This is what's wrong. I mean, okay. this is what's wrong. He buys and sells politicians of all stripes. He's already... Dr. Paul. Hey, look, look. He's already hedging his bet on the Clintons, okay? So if he doesn't run as a Republican, maybe he supports Clinton or maybe runs as an independent. Okay. But I'd say that he's already hedging his bets because he's used to buying politicians. Well, I've given him plenty of money. one 855 400 Savage. Judy on line two is listening on WBAP. Judy, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Judy. Oh, uh, hi. Thank you for taking my call. Welcome. I was, I cannot believe what happened and what they did to Trump. I heard the day before that Fox News wanted to take him down, and I'm very disappointed because, uh, to me, Megan's questions uh, were just like when Katie Couric took down Sarah Palin like she was trying to do the gotcha moment. Yep. Well, to me, I associate the gotcha things with CNN and MSNBC and the whole right. Democrat left. Yes. The rhinos now seem to be, uh, who probably run Fox News, because uh, they're mostly on there, uh, they've decided to use the same tactics. I noticed in, I believe it was Mississippi, a uh, uh, Tea Party person, uh, Patrick was his last name, he was running for office, and the incumbent, who people wanted to get out, went out and, ever, uh, and said that everyone who's a Democrat should come and vote in the election, the Republican election for him, so that he would win hmm. instead of having Patrick in. And right. they're, they're playing dirty politics, just like Democrats now, and I really hate to see that go down, because I had turned tuned in to see a quality. I was expecting, because it was, quote, Fox News, fair and balanced. Right. Right, a quality debate, but they immediately turned it into gotcha, and it hmm. turns out that the things she was talking about, they were pulled out of context. Yes. Now, Judy, thank you for the call. It, it was definitely pulled out of context. If you're a woman listening right now, and again, maybe first time call, I'd like to know if you're a woman, if you think Trump owes Megyn Kelly an apology. And what did you think of Megyn Kelly? I mean, she feels she went toe-to-toe with him. 1-855-400-7282. Stephen is listening on line three on WMAL in Washington. Stephen, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Stephen. Good evening, John. Hi there. Am I glad to get on and talk about this? You know, since you said Megyn Kelly is listening, just speaking directly to her, I would say this. You know, Megyn... Instead of invoking the false narrative of war on women to attack Trump with, you could have actually talked about the elderly widow who he stole her property from when she wouldn't sell, and he went to the city and used eminent domain to have the property condemned. You could have been the hero, Kelly, but you are. You are the villain because you use the false narrative to attack Trump with. Now, one other thing, John, and that's this. Go ahead. Paul is the only one who really stood up to Trump where it matters. And he also stood up 
to what Savage, all what Dr. Savage is constantly talking about, the NHS, the CIA, and the DHS. Well, Rand Paul was the only one who stood up to Chris Christie on that, okay? He's because they're watching white males like me who go to work every day and don't break <laughs> the law. So you know what, Thank John? I should have been on an hour ago because I've been waiting an hour to get on and say this. Now, well, we're, we're trying to get everybody on, Stephen. You know what else? Rand Paul did have a great line about hugging uh, President Obama. I mean, no question. D on line eight is listing on WBAP in Dallas. D, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, D. Yes, hi. Um, I'll answer that question for you as far as does uh, he owe Megan an apology. I think she owes everybody an apology. When she put Debbie Wasserman Schultz on after those guys were up there, I couldn't believe it. That was an insult to every single person, not just Donald Trump or anybody else. And I am for Donald Trump, but she owes everybody an apology. How rude was that? She sat there and said, so what did you think of our candidates? <laughs> what did you think she was going to say? And why waste our time listening to that when we just had all these guys on? And yep. what did it do to them? I mean, that just, to me, was a takedown right there. She set up the whole deal, and I'll tell you why she did that. She did that because she was auditioning for her big interview with Hillary. That's what that was about. And everybody seems to have missed that part, but that's what was going on with her right then. She was doing this for her interview. And, you know, you don't bring her on to our, to our you know, Republican debate and ask her a question like that and expect for us to be sitting there going, oh, isn't this interesting? What Dee, you know what, D as, as Wasserman Schultz, she could not answer. I think it was on with Matthews, Chris Matthews. She could not answer when asked, what's the difference between being a Democrat and the Socialist Party and being a socialist? She 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 couldn't even answer that question. You know why, D Because right now there is nothing. What did Bernie Sanders have? Thank you for the call, D 19,000 people out at his rally? And, and there is no difference, is, is the real answer to that. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Dial 1-855-400-7282. Our website is michaelsavage.com. More poll numbers. Again, the Trump strikes back again. We'll play the sound of that. Refusing to apologize. Meanwhile, more rioting in Ferguson. The one-year anniversary of the shooting. And what happened? 50 people went looting, and there was a shooting in Ferguson. And nothing said about that. Nothing covered about that. Instead, more trashing of Trump, trying to drive him out of the party. What do you think of the group that disinvited him? For the Red State on, on Saturday in Atlanta, as if they decide who gets to speak to the different people. I think it's wrong. And again, would love to hear your thoughts on Megan Kelly, especially women, one eight five five four hundred Savage. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and you're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage eight five five four hundred seven two eight two Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can call the program 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Against the backdrop of all the talk on the race for president, it was the anniversary of Ferguson. Listen to what the crowd was chanting protesters in Ferguson. We ready for war. 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 Ready for war. Are we ready for war? And no one speaks out against that. Let's hear that one more time. Again, this was protesters yesterday, last night, in Ferguson, chanting, we are ready for war. We're 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 ready
go join the military. Lori is on line one, listening on KBOI. Lori, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi. I'm a new listener. Oh, great. Welcome, Lori. I hope you're enjoying the Savage Nation today. I just want to say that I am a Fox News addict. I could not get enough of Megyn Kelly. She has beauty and brains, and she's a quick thinker, but obviously she was sitting on her brains the night she did the debate. You, you didn't care for her demeanor? Yeah, I will no longer be listening to Fox News. You're not going to watch her anymore. Well, you know, thank you for the call, Lori. Someone else who's speaking out is Hillary Clinton. Did you hear what she said about the whole thing? I'm going to tell you about that in just a moment. Line four is Kirsten, who's listening on WTMA in South Carolina. Kirsten, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Kirsten. Hi, thank you, John. I just wanted to mention the fact that, uh, you know, this is an establishment setup. I think we all agree on that. But, you know, if you look back on Murdoch's, uh, Twitter account, and he's making all kinds of derogatory remarks about Trump. You know, a month ago he was saying he was embarrassing his friends and, and the whole country. And as far as Megyn Kelly goes, she's a lawyer. You know, I really think that, you know, she was selected for the prosecution, you know, which was just, it, it was disgusting. It, it was an outrage. I completely disagree with it. I'm no longer a viewer. But, um, you know, Trump is a leader, you know, and I think that's why we're all, uh, you know, who speaks his mind, who's honest, and who's a strategic thinker, which we haven't had in a long time. I think we're all starving for that. You know, it's uh, it's interesting. Think of the call, Stephanie. It is interesting how they keep counting him out. They keep saying, oh, he's not going to recover from this, and he just continues to bounce back. And he's also able to do it by phone. I was just looking at a, a story I saw on Twitter where he, they say, I think it was, I forget where I saw, he has hijacked the, the primary by phone. Even meet the press, he just phones it in. Most of the other candidates have to go, of course they want them, in studio, on camera, but he's even just doing it by phone. Washington Post, Clinton, Trump is offensive to women, but so is Rubio and the rest of the GOP field. Donald Trump's remarks about Fox News anchor Megyn Kelly are offensive, but the rest of the Republican field is equally offensive, said Hillary Clinton today in New Hampshire. Notice she also mentions Marco Rubio. We'll take more of your phone calls. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Inviting you to call into the program today. At 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Visit the website, michaelsavage.com, all your latest news, headlines. Sign up for the Savage Newsletter. It's free. And don't forget about Countdown to Mecca, Dr. Savage, latest bestseller, still available in stores online, makes a great late summer reading Maybe you're going to go on vacation or give it to someone nice. Countdown to Mecca. And also the exciting news. People are excited. This October, the new nonfiction book from Dr. Michael Savage, October, coming out in October, Government Zero. Government Zero. Third world dictatorship ruled by Government Zero. Absolute government and zero representation. Again, visit the website at michaelsavage.com. We're going to get back to your phone calls, but also in the news. How about Bernie Sanders? Number one, as much as the Clinton people don't like it, he is attracting big crowds. Now listen to this. Bernie Sanders having a rally, giving a speech in front of thousands in Seattle, and this is courtesy of KIRO-TV in Seattle, when suddenly... You're going to hear it. The protest group Black Lives Matter, they take to the stage and force him off the stage. Let's listen to it. Thank you, Seattle, for being one of the most progressive cities in the United States of America. We, we want an opportunity to address. We want an opportunity okay. on the mic. Okay. Well, ask him. 
If you do not listen to her, no, no, your no, event no, will be no, shut down no, right now. Right no, now. No, your decision. Make a decision now. We will let we will no, we are going to we are going to let you on the mic. Do not okay. Her. Okay. All right, so we are trying to be reasonable. We are trying to be reasonable. We are trying to be reasonable. We are reasonable. We are trying. We're going to give you, we're going to let you on the mic. We are going to give you the mic. We will, after Senator Sanders. 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 Do not tell me what After Senator Sanders. Shut it down. After Senator Sanders. Okay. It's not even their rally. No, let it go. Let it go. All right. Can we're, you imagine putting up with this? We're shutting it down. It's not you your are rally. Shutting it down. You are disrupting this event. You are disrupting Embarrassing. this event. We are shutting. We are respectable. No, you're not. You're going to shut it down. Go sit down. Terrible. Listen to that. Black Lives Matter protest shut Bernie Sanders down in Seattle. How do you let that happen? Have your own rally. I mean, I'm certainly not a fan of him. Total socialist. But could you? how do you stand by and let those people take over the rally that way? Sanity. We are respectable, screaming at him. Yeah, you're real respectable. Meanwhile, President Obama, in the midst of enjoying his uh, yet another vacation, talked about Iran's supreme leader, saying he's a pot. Listen. He's a polit. This is courtesy of CNN. He's a politician, like everybody else. Well, as I said, don't negotiate deals with your friends. You negotiate them with your enemies. And superpowers don't respond to taunts. Superpowers focus on what is it that we need to do in order to preserve our national security and the national security of our allies and our friends. So there's always a gap between rhetoric and action, uh, and. Uh, you know, the Supreme Leader is a politician, apparently, just like uh, everybody else. What I'm focused on is, can we make sure that they are doing what they have to do and that we have sufficient safeguards, verification mechanisms, to ensure that they don't have a nuclear weapon? There are no safeguards. How about that trying to humanize... (laughs) The Supreme Leader in Iran. Boy, it never ends, does it? It just never ends. All right, let's go to your phone calls. Line five is Stephanie. She's listening in Tennessee on WJCW. Stephanie, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. I felt that the debate was more of a roast, and I was disappointed because I wanted to hear more about what the candidates had to say on the important issues, and I don't feel that I could really get that because they had to spend all their time defending themselves. And I felt that Martha McCallum did a much better job on the first debate. And I learned a lot more about the candidates than Megyn Kelly did on the second debate. Well, it's interesting you say that, Stephanie. Now, keep in mind, I mean, it is tough when you have 10 people, right? And they could only give 30-second answers. But do you feel that they were there, Megyn Kelly, Chris Wallace, Brett Baer, were they more there to kind of be the stars of the show as opposed to just trying to get discussion going from the candidates? Yes, I I felt that uh, it was more of a roast, like I said, and they should have been there to facilitate the candidates to bring us information, and instead all it was was an opportunity for them. They had to constantly defend themselves, and we never got to any beef. (laughs) Yeah, that's a very good point. You know, it's interesting... um, Obviously, you know, a lot of people saying in the 5 o'clock debate, the earlier debate, that Carly Fiorina, you know, that was her chance to shine. Latest NBC News poll, she has really shot up in the polls. She is now tied for fourth at 8% with Marco Rubio. And notice Hillary Clinton. I was mentioning the statement. Hillary Clinton today in New Hampshire tried to attack Marco Rubio. But some of the other people, some of the other candidates, I should say, that were on stage in the five o'clock debate, in the earlier debate, I mean, they should just give it up. Don't you think? Rick Santorum 
and George Pataki scored are at zero in the NBC poll. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who was in the big stage debate, is at 1%. And he's tied with Bobby Jindal and Lindsey Graham at 1%. Huckabee Rand Paul, sixth place, 5% each, followed by Rick Perry and John Governor Kasich are at just 2%. Now, you know, it's interesting because a number of people thought Kasich did well, but you're still only at 2%. But I think Jeb Bush, he's tied with Scott Walker for fifth place, collecting 7% each, down three points for each candidate. Isn't it interesting that when people got to hear Scott Walker and Jeb Bush, they went down. When people got to hear Trump more, he went up. When viewers got, voters got to hear Senator Ted Cruz, He went up. He's now in second place at 13%. And when people got to hear Marco Rubio and Carly Fiorina, they went up to 8% from 2%. So depending on the candidate, when some people got to hear them, they actually went up. When some people got to hear others, they went down. You know what's a disgrace? is what's going on right now in Ferguson. 50 people. So this is the one-year anniversary of Michael Brown, the gentle giant, being shot. So what do they do on the anniversary? 50 people looted a beauty store in St. Louis. And protesters grew confrontational late in the evening and then leading to a shooting. And why was there a shooting? Because the police have a right to defend themselves. One of the protesters went to shoot at the police. And then you heard, we played the sound of some of the protesters chanting that they want a war. Out to your calls. Mark is listening on WBOB in Florida. Mark, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hey, John. How you doing? Very well, Mark. Go right ahead. Uh, real quickly, I've been listening to Michael Savage since I was stationed at Treasure Island in San Francisco. Big fan. Great. Also, I was a big fan of Fox and Megyn Kelly before the other night. After the first ten minutes, I was so disgusted, I turned off my TV and, wa- and walked off. I'll never watch Fox again. Uh, well, I'll take that back. I did watch the commentary afterwards, and it was so evident. It was Megyn Kelly was all about herself. Brittany Hume was uh, making comments about the candidates, and Megyn Kelly asked him, well, what do you think about the moderators? You know, she was concerned about herself, and it was just disgusting. I'm done with Fox. Yeah, and the only thing to call Mark, but but Mark, the problem is there's nothing else to watch. I mean, so does that mean what? You're going to watch uh, Rachel Maddow? You're, you're going to watch CNN, Anderson Cooper? I mean, that that's part of the problem. Line six is Kevin. He's listening on WBAP in Dallas. Kevin, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Kevin. Hey, John. Uh the the protesters yelling that they're ready for war is yeah. hilarious. They're, they're, all they do is just yell and cause disruptions and everything else. They're not soldiers. If they want to stand toe to toe with the rest of us that are that are trained and everything else, then they're going to lose. They're going to be the ones calling the police, not not trying to get away from them. So these protesters need to think about when they say they're ready for war. Are they really? <laughs> let's play that again. Thank you for the call, Kevin. Let's uh, let's play that again, Rob. Again, this is protesters in Ferguson, one year anniversary on the shooting. Michael Brown. Keep in mind, he charged at the police. He punched the police. Uh, terrible the way it was then played out in the media. Let's hear. This is the protesters now on the anniversary of that shooting, chanting, "We're ready for war." Hands up, don't loot. Line five is Dave listing on WBAP. Dave, you're on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, where I live on Fox 4, it seems like they always talk about the Michael Br- uh, Brown situation. They always show a 14-year-old kid, you know, 
And it was evidence that we've seen the videos of this young man when he was actually 18, uh, stealing cigars, throwing a manager of the store around, you know, and doing all these things. And I I don't know why they want to get that in instead of a child. What if you have a child molester who goes around molesting children and you show a 12-year-old picture of the child molesters when he's actually 32 years old? How does that work? Well, David, but you know why they they showed it is because then to try to say, I mean, think about the narrative. First of all, he was over 300 pounds. He was a big guy. He would uh, brutally, you know, bully his way even into theft. But they wanted a narrative of this harmless, young, unarmed teen who was just minding his own business and then suddenly was shot down by a white police officer who, you know, what that what was the narrative that was carried in the protest? He had his hands up and he was kneeling down and it's as if the police officer went over and executed him. And so why think of the call, Dave? It was the same thing with Trayvon Martin, where they find, you know, they, they found a, a photo that was, you know, old and portrayed him much younger looking and with an air of innocence about him. And that's part of, right, that's part of the narrative that they want to put forward. They didn't, they didn't show the large, you know, bully, out-of-control ox Michael Brown, boom, punching the guy for because they wanted to steal cigars and everything else. That's not the, the narrative that the media wants. Sharon on line three is listening on WVNN in Alabama. Sharon, you're on the Savage Nation. This is John DiPietro. Hello, Sharon. Hi there. Thank you for having me. I'm a first-time caller. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm going to make a comment about the debate, and if you'll kindly allow me, I'll make a quick comment about the Ferguson issue as well. Go right ahead. What I want to say about the debate, and I'm going to let everyone in your, your audience know, I am not against Donald Trump. I'm cautious, cautiously positive towards him. I'm a conservative Christian, so I have a little bit of, of concern as far as his positions because they changed fairly recently. But um, listen, if he's the candidate against whoever the Democrat nominee is, I'm going to vote for him. I vote for Broom at this point against the Democratic campaign because at least a Broom would do no harm, and it might clean up the mess that the Obama administration is leaving behind. But getting back to the debate, I am really surprised and disappointed by so many people saying that they won't listen to Fox News anymore and that Megyn Kelly handled herself incorrectly, that the questions were unfair, and that she was only thinking of herself. I thought they were very fair. I thought they were, the reason why they asked those kind of questions is those are the questions the nominee, a Republican nominee, will face when they face much tougher uh, debates against the uh, Democratic candidate. So this, and Donald Trump, I, he was interviewed and, and he was asked, are you going to, um, you know, practice for the debate and, or train for it? And he said, no, I'm just going to be myself. Rookie mistake. Hmm. Debates are very, very tough. You just can't go in and be yourself because you're going to get hit by surprise questions. And That's an interesting. Believe- thank you, Sharon. That's an interesting point. We'll come back. More of your phone calls. Again, John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Are you- You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Remember to visit our website, which is michaelsavage.com. All the latest news headlines sign up for the savage newsletter which is free at michaelsavage.com you'll see some of the stories that are being highlighted right now like the sickening video which reveals isis new method of execution you know this is another example after you see this how we need a tough leader that's going to take over the white house because they certainly aren't afraid of the current occupant of the White House right now. Also, you'll get to hear Michael Savage's take on Megyn Kelly and Fox and clear that apparently he feels working for the other side and working with the Democrats and Hillary Clinton. Read about all of it at michaelsavage.com. As much as they're going to try... Trump is not getting out of the race, not when he's the front runner. Visit the web- website, michaelsavage.com. Again, John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. And as always, you're listening 
to the Savage Nation.